When Queen Elizabeth I ascended the throne in 1533, she wanted to restore the Protestant religion and maintain the peace and stability of the kingdom. She was a patron of the arts and was a huge supporter of William Shakespeare, who showed his Renaissance spirit through his literature. She strongly encouraged learning, education, and literacy because she had gotten a very impressive education as a child. During her reign, she gave playwrights freedom to break from England's past style of theater. They were not binded by the religious plays and stories because Queen Elizabeth banned them in 1559 to help stop violence over religion. Traveling actors began performing around London in courtyards of taverns called inyards. Temporary stages would be built and actors would perform in front of a maximum of 500 people. The rise in crime and body nature of some of these plays, fighting, drinking, caused the Church of England to ban all plays within the city limits in 1596. There was also a ban on theater due to the bubonic plague. This is why theaters were outside the city limits on the south side of the River of Thames. This city was called Southwark, where Shakespeare built his famous Globe Theater. It was a round wooden building that was believed to be 100 feet in diameter. It had three stories, an open roof, and hosted a wooden stage approximately 45 feet wide and five feet high. The theater made use of a real cannon that was filled with gunpowder and an area which could hoist actors off the ground known as the heavens. The stage housed a gallery just above the stage wall. It was called the Lord's Room and used for rich members of the audience and the upper classes. The Lord's Rooms were considered the best seats in the house. The cost was five pence and cushion seats were provided for these elite members of the audience. Other seating include rooftop galleries for the upper class, which range from three to four pence, and the pit area surrounding the stage. The poor section was known as the groundings, and they paid a penny to stand. The Globe held about 1,500 people. There were no women actors at this time, so adolescent boys dressed up in wigs and dresses to play women. The actors wore lavish costumes, used blunt swords. There were sound effects. It was living, breathing theater. To advertise plays, flags were hoisted above the theater. White meaning comedy, red meaning a historic play, and black meaning a tragedy. The theater was crude and common and was seen inappropriate for women. Some upper class women even wore masks so they wouldn't be recognized because of the nature of such shows. The Globe Theater was London's entertainment of that day. And that's why so many flocked to the theaters. Shakespeare wrote plays, which even today are performed and entertain thousands and thousands of people every day. 